Hi booktube! I'm here finally <laughs> with my January wrap-up. No excuse except just, you know, didn't feel like filming. <laughs> um, so here's what I read in January. I had a goal in January and that is to read the books that I got for Christmas. I semi-accomplished that. I had the uh, addendum for some of them that, you know, I had uh, book one and book two in the series and I figured I'll just read book one and call it okay. And then I had a collection of Stephen King stories and I said if I read, you know, two out of the four of them, I'll be okay with that. And so I did accomplish that. There were some other books that I didn't read, but we're not going to talk about them because we're here to talk about the books I did read. <laughs> um, another goal that I have for the rest of the year is to read a book from the Bible. Um, the book I read in January was the book of Job, um, written by Moses is kind of the general consensus there. It's the book of the Bible that deals with the question of suffering. So we have Job, um, who is apparently the perfect worshipper of God. Um, so Satan challenges God, you know, maybe he won't be such a faithful man if you test him, if you take away all this stuff that you've given him. Um, so God takes away his, uh, Job's um, wealth, his children, his health, and then finally his health. And that's finally what cracks Job to be like, why me? I am, you know, this, this, and that, and I shouldn't be suffering, and why is this happening? And his three friends come along, and they all, you know, either try to comfort him or say, hey, yeah, you, maybe you're not as good a person as you think you are. <laughs> um, and finally God comes down and says, oh, big spoilers, by the way. <laughs> it's only ten pages long, so <laughs> I don't know how, many, how much of a spoiler it is. Um, and it's like one of the oldest stories ever, right? Um, so uh, God finally comes down and says like, who are you, a mere human, to understand anything? Um, yeah, <laughs> so that's it. Um, it doesn't explain why they're suffering aside from the we cannot understand, but uh, it does have this a notion that God is unknowable. Um, you know, he's, he's not, we can't understand him by human logical means. Um, and, uh, you know, a divine being is obviously above logic, right? Uh, it's a very interesting depiction of Satan. He works as a foil against God, um, which goes against, you know, our common perception of Satan. Uh, I think this is one of the books of the Bible you should read to understand him a bit more. Yeah. Okay. Then I uh, listened to Life Ceremony by Siaka Murata. Just, it's Sayaka Murata, what more do you need to know? That's all I need to know going in. Um, so this is a collection of short stories. Um, Sayaka Murata, if you don't know, she also wrote Earthlings and um, The Convenience Store Woman, or Convenience Store Woman, yeah. And they are both favorite books, and this is another favorite. Now, so this is a series of short stories dealing with a wide range of issues, including cannibalism, uh, the use of human bodies for furniture and clothing, weird foods, platonic families, um, the connection between humans and buildings, you know, kind of really normal weird things. And I say normal weird because she takes these really weird concepts and initially, in, for example, in the use of human bodies for furniture and clothing, I was like, ew, no, like, why would I want a book covered in human skin? You know, why would I want to wear a shirt knitted out of human hair? Um, but then as the story goes on, you're just like, wait, like, are you changing my ethics in a short story? Like, what's going on here? Um, yeah, and it makes you think that, you know, dead human, dead consenting human bodies, like the consent was achieved before death. You don't ask a dead body whether you use it, but before death, you ask the human if you use their dead body for parts. And I'm like, well, I can't find anything wrong with that. <laughs> like, this is weird. So, uh, and there were, like, every story did that. Every story started, I was like, ew, like, no, I don't, you know, that's kind of weird. And then I, by the end, I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe that's not so weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I can, can say about that. If you want to completely blow and change your mind, Sayaka Kamarada is the place to go for that. I also read The Black Tides of Heaven by Neon Yang. Um, it's... I called it interesting enough. <laughs> um, I was more interested in the concepts that um, they were exploring as opposed to like the story, the plot, 
and the characters really even, uh, just because it felt far too short. Um, it really could have done with, you know, expanding more of the world and the characters and everything. Um, I really like the concept of gender, whereas in you can select your gender when you're ready. Up until that point you remain genderless, um, and you can continue to remain genderless as well. But there can come a point in your life, at any point in your life, where you decide, oh, okay, I'm male, I'm female, or I'm not male or female. Um, yeah, just, that's all I have to say about it. <laughs> uh, then I read two Stephen King short stories. The first was The Lingle Years. Um, so people on a plane fall asleep and end up in a different destination than the one they thought they were going to. Is the simplest way I can put it. It's uh, see, it's 248 pages, and they're calling it a short story, and I'm just like, N -n that's not even a novella. That's like a novel at this point. <laughs> so, but it's still short for Stephen King. Anyways, um, it had really interesting characters. There's one character. Um, can't remember his name, but if you've read it, you'll know when I say the bad guy. <laughs> Um, they created a lot of sympathy for him. Stephen King did. Um, yeah, and you're just thinking, like, this poor, horrible person. It sucks what happened to him, and it sucks that he's not breaking the cycle, but, yeah. That's, I can't really explain much more. Then I also read Secret Window, Secret Garden, which was much shorter. Um, but still, like, 150 pages or so. Um, so, this is about, a uh, a writer, his life's not going so great for him, um, and this man shows up on his doorstep and says, hey, you plagiarized my story, um, bad things are going to happen if you don't prove that you didn't plagiarize the story. And it's a question of insanity. Um, is this man who's accusing him real? Um, you know, what's going on in his life? You know, all sorts of strange, weird, bad things happen. I didn't enjoy it. Um, I can't. You can look up trigger warnings online. Okay, then I also read The Cloister Walk by Kathleen Norris, and I have like a love-hate relationship with this book. Uh, it's about a woman who decides to, um, she doesn't join the, uh, the, the monastery, like she doesn't become a monk or nun, but she, uh, I think it's called, a, she does a residency, that's it, um, at a Benedictine monastery. And this whole, the, well, most of the book, <laughs> there's my uh, pit bit there, um, is talking about the religious life, different religious ideas, and I really enjoyed that aspect. Um, her being kind of an outsider, she's Protestant, and then joining like this Catholic, you know, intense religious life um, was interesting, an interesting outside perspective. Um, yeah, I especially like her sections on women in the church. Um, the Virgin Saints uh, was also an interesting uh, chapter, and uh, the chapter of um, about celibacy, um, because in the monastery monks and nuns have to take a vow of celibacy. Um, yeah, it was really good. Those parts were particularly good, um, but about two thirds of the way in, she started incorporating more of her own personal life outside of the church that didn't have anything to do with church. Like when she was talking about her own church back home, I could understand that because it was in contrast, but when she just started talking about like regular secular things, I was just like, I don't care. I didn't, and to be honest, I don't, I don't think we would get along is how I'm gonna put it nicely, um, her and I. Um, her, she thought that her and her career was very special and the way she tried to relate it to the religious life. And not saying that it's not special, but she was it was kind of far too far stretched trying to, you know, reach that um comparison. I was just like, you're just you're you're not hitting it in the mark. You're coming off as really arrogant. Um and when I say arrogant I mean it's like it's different from confidence in that it's has a false bottom. You know, it's it's not it's not real. Um, yeah, but overall, I enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, it's just those sections and maybe her personality I didn't enjoy. 
Okay, uh, then I read Drop Threads by a whole bunch of people, um, but it was edited by Carol Shields and Marjorie Anderson. So these two uh, Canadian famous writers um, realized that there were some things in womanhood that needed to be passed on that weren't necessarily talked about. These were threads that were dropped in conversations, right? That weren't talked about. Um, so they got a whole bunch of uh, mostly over 40 Canadian women to write different essays. Um, topics include menopause, a terminal il illness, um, child loss, female friendships, aging, and lots more. Um, and uh, they're all from all different careers, not all of them were writers. Um, some of them were like lawyers and stuff, so like all different aspects you've got there. Uh, my only criticism is that all of the authors were white. Um, there is drop threads too, so I wonder if they rectified that. Um, it would be great to hear from some indigenous women in Canada, um, as well as, you know, from other different races, but I think indigenous, especially women, especially with the missing and murdered indigenous women, um, you know, it would be very vital to <laughs> include their voices. Um, yeah, so those are all the books that I've read, and I, I say that because I don't have another way of distinguishing them from comics, which I also consider books. Um, so. I'm just going to go quickly through the comics. Um, I read The Case of the Missing Marquess, which is Enola Holmes Volume 1. I enjoy the TV show. The TV show is much better than the comic. And I'm sure the comic is based off the book. I made the mistake thinking the comic came first. The comic felt very abridged and very short. Um, so I guess whereas in the book and the TV show, it was able to expand upon it more. So the art is, is interesting, but... Otherwise, I'd, I'd say, um, unless you're really into Enola Holmes, you can skip it. And then I read Beneficio, which um, is about, I'm trying to remember because it's a while it goes. It's about a woman in Poland who picks up after her grandmother has died and goes away and kind of disappears. Yeah. And it's, it was okay. It was all kind of like yellowy toned. I think it was trying to do something much deeper than it actually accomplished. Um, there were so many moments that could have meant more um, that were kind of just left. And I guess that's part of the comic too is that they were left without explanation so you had to determine your own explanation from, from the picture, from the image. But it still felt lacking. If that makes sense. It tried to be deep in some places which is what got me Whereas in, it could have used that depth in other parts. Yes. Okay, then I'm going to save my favorite for last. <laughs> then I read Jim Henson's The Storyteller, uh, which is about a man and his dog retelling stories from around the world, fables, fairy tales, those kind of things. I'm reading Jim Henson collection. Um, so that was, that was sweet. Um, nothing particularly stands out about it. Um, each story was done by a different artist and a different writer, and you got stories from all over the world. It was pretty cool. Uh, then I was only supposed to read Barracuda issue one, <laughs> but I read all six issues. Uh, and this is like a pirate story. We ha concentrated on this island. Um, these uh, fancy, fancy people um, get taken by the pirates to this island, um, and we're following them. Um, one is a I guess non-binary would be the best word for them. They don't actually use that word, but it's, it comes across in the art and their story. Um, this one's non-binary and um, in a queer relationship. And then the other is a female, a uh, young female, um, but she marries the richest man and, you know, all sorts of pirating intrigues happen. Um, yeah, it was quite interesting. Editing Courtney dropping in, I just wanted to say another comment about this series of comics and that the art is amazing. I love it when uh, the art in comics is really detailed um, and that was in this in this case like the backgrounds, the people, like there's definitely no question about getting people confused. Like everyone had their own really distinct, really detailed style and I really appreciated that. And my favorite was The Eternaut. It's an Argentinian comic. I didn't realize it was from the 60s. It felt very, you know, modern to me still. Like, it felt kind of timeless. 
And this is about um, alien invasion. <laughs> Basically these uh, really smart men are all together, obviously, thankfully, because they survive and save the, well, whether they save the world or not, but anyways, there's lots of questions because it's science fiction and really cool. It messes with like time and universes and different creatures. Um, but anyways, it starts with them being in this house and it starts snowing and they look outside and realize that the snow is killing everything it touches. Um, and it starts from there. Um, they have these one creatures called the hands and it is, they're like enslaved to help take over and they sing this death song and it's just so like beautifully done. Um, it was just like a really enjoyable like awesome story. I read it on my phone and I had it like zoomed right out. I was just like had to see the art and the pictures and it was like it was really good. It was a really good story. I it felt like a novel almost. Um, it would make an amazing like movie. It was just very stimulating and also like emotional and interesting and just like go out and read this comic. It's really good. Um, yeah so that's that is everything I read in January. Uh, let me know what your favorite thing from January was and thank you for watching.